Look, I liked what the Boston Celtics have done this offseason. First off, you know what they did? They didn't have, after Jason Tatum laid an egg and Jalen Brown wasn't able to take responsibility of all the scoring that would need to be done in the finals, and it was basically left to Al Horford to be the scorer for the Boston Celtics in the last few games of the NBA Finals. I feel like Brad Stevens looked at this and was like, all right, we need more scoring off the bench. Malcolm Brogdon, you're coming in, you're going to be the sixth man. That's supposedly what he said he wants to play is he views himself as the sixth man as they're going to retain the starting lineup of Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and I believe Al Horford and Robert Williams with Mar Malcolm Brogdon off the bench, Daniel Gallinari off the bench, Derek White off the bench. Like, that's already solid, okay? Grant Williams off the bench. Awesome. Okay, so... Right there, you already have a nine-man rotation. That's good. That's going to give you a bunch of scoring. Throw in Payne Pritchard. That's 10 guys off the bench. They also brought back Sam Hauser on a three-year deal. They're already 11 guys deep. They brought, drafted J.D. Davison. So for me, this team knew that they needed more scoring help off the bench. Like Payne, There was times during the final, not, not just in the finals, but in the NBA playoffs that Payne Pritchard, who... You know, he's gotten better defensively, but let's not act like Payne Pritchard's ever going to win, you know, Defense Player of the Year awards anytime soon. He was actually being forced to come in and be a part of their rotation, like like a serious part of the team's rotation, which just for me was pretty amazing to watch. OK, when you were just sitting there and you're like, damn, they're really forced to put Payne Pritchard out there because nobody is making enough creation on offense and that's what they did they brought shot creation in and that was a big thing that they needed also check this out jalen brown can and secure eight million dollars in incentives if he wins the mvp or defensive player of the year or makes an all nba team according to bob b marks he can make eight million dollars extra if he wins mvp or defensive player of the year Ooh, i like that i like that jalen brown Writing into his contract to incentivize himself to go, you know, become a defensive player of your MVP caliber. And I expect Jalen Brown to come back and be a dog. But to deal on Arium, all in my truth, truth be told, I think that if he's utilized correctly, he could be, you know, six man of the year caliber type player. Same thing with Malcolm Brogdon. Both of those guys, if they play like 20 minutes a night and can average over 15 points off the bench, those both either one of those guys could be six man of the year caliber and the thing with Daniel Gallinari is they're going to play him at small forward and power forward so he'll be able to guard because of his size I know he's not super athletic anymore but he'll be able to stay out on the perimeter and you know cause havoc in my opinion if this is a team that they have been you know obviously they're being tied into the Kevin Durant sweepstakes but I doubt they would and supposedly a package would be around Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart according to Mike Scotto of Hoops Hype and supposedly Thaddeus Young was listening to or it had interest expressed to him by the Celtics. Same thing with Chris Boucher and a few other guys in free agency. And it seems like, yeah, they're, they were looking for more two-way guys or either offensively driven guys who could play some defense. And I think they're, they were doing, they're doing the smart thing and looking for the right guys to add into this team that they've needed. And that's, I mean, it's just realizing your mistakes and trying to build upon your weaknesses to be better for the future and that's how what what championship teams do and we're seeing it in display right now so for me look Martin brogdon says he's hoping that he can help the celtic get over the hump and win a championship brogdon brings the experience running the pacers offense and leading the organization and he was asked about how he fit into the celtics overall to be successful and he says these guys are proven winners at a championship level and he hopes to be one of those pieces that can get him over the hump and win a championship and uh he's excited to join the you know the, the family and his priority is just to be healthy and get a ring and obviously supposedly over 20 times that hey also this is the second time that the pacers acquired next alexius the first time was in 2019 from the Rockets as part of salary dump. It's supposedly Nick Sauskas and the Pacers, TJ McCollin are good friends. But hey, 
It doesn't even matter. I just think that was a robbery. Daniel Tice, Aaron Neesmith, Nick Stauskas in a first round pick for their man. And they got themselves Daniil Gallinari. And also, suppose Thomas Bryant has received significant interest from contending teams, including the Boston Celtics, expected to make his decision later this morning, which this was two days ago, and he didn't even make it. So, Thomas Bryant, you, you lied to us. You didn't make a decision. And I wonder what team you're going to join because the Celtics are making a run. And this was two days. You probably drop it on, you know, 